Connecting Your Rotary Digital Resources. I'm Katherine Langford, Rotary Co Coordinator Support Specialist for the Regional Coordinator Programs, and I will be moderating today's session. Thank you for joining us. For the next 75 minutes, we'll explore Rotary.org and talk about some of the new features. You will learn how other coordinators are using the new website to support them in their work in the field and hear updates about future rollouts. We will also talk about Rotary Club Central, and coordinators will share tips on how they are using this tool to support them in their role. We will hear about some new features, as well as review some functionality of Rotary Club Central. Before we get started, let's talk about how you can participate in today's webinar. You each have your own control panel in the upper right-hand corner of your screen that looks similar to the one shown here. The orange arrow can be used to open or close your control panel. Next, please select the audio option for listening to today's webinar. Select the option you prefer in your own control panel in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. If you'd like to connect via telephone, the dial-in and access numbers will be provided to you in your control panel once you select the telephone option. Or you may choose to participate via mic and speakers from your system. If you're using your computer speakers and are having problems hearing, you may wish to try USB headphones or switch to the telephone option. In order to maintain the highest sound quality possible, all but our panelists and myself will be muted during the webinar. If you have any questions or comments you would like to share with our guest panelists or myself, please use the question pod on your attendee control panel. Let's try it out now. Let us know where you are in the world and how the weather is. To let us know where you are, please use the question panel. Looks like we have Stephen joining us from Seattle, Washington, and it's beautiful. We've got Chris in Portugal who says it's very, very hot. Bruce is joining us from Evanston right where we are, and it is the hottest day of the year here. Looks like we've got a whole bunch of people joining us from all over the world. Great. It's great to have you all here. We encourage you to use this question pod if you're having technical difficulties as well. Please describe the problems you are having in the questions box in your control panel, and an RI staff member will assist you as soon as possible. We will do our best to address as many questions as possible during today's webinar, but please keep in mind that if your question is not addressed during the question and answer portion, you will receive a response via email within the week. Today we are joined by a terrific panel of both coordinators and staff who will share tips and best practices for how they are using some of the new digital resources. Let's meet our panelists. First, we'll hear from Gail Nepper, Rotary Coordinator for Zone 24 West. Hello, fellow coordinators. Hi, Gail. Thanks for joining us today. Joan Perkins. Regional Rotary Foundation Coordinator for Zone 25 is also here with us today. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Joan. Great to have you here. Here to assist with Rotary Club Central is Liz Lapp. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Liz. And here to assist with Rotary.org is Peter Marcos. Hello, everybody. Hi, Peter. Nancy Neff will also be joining us today and will be answering questions regarding the new website. Thank you all for being here. First, let's hear from Peter Marcos on why Rotary.org was redesigned. Peter? We're happy to have uh, you with us today, and we're excited to share some of the exciting features of the new website. We want to make sure you feel comfortable navigating the new site and can quickly access the tools and information you need to do the do the business of Rotary. So how did we get here? Many of you are familiar with some of the frustrations of the previous website. We've heard it all. Hard time finding documents, hard time finding search or searching for things, and we wanted to make that experience better. And so we heard you. We went through a fairly intense process to rebuild the website and give it a fresh look and feel and make it more intuitive and easier to navigate. The most fundamental change with the new site is that it's actually two distinct sites, one geared towards you, our members, that would be my Rotary, and one designed specifically for the public so that they can learn what a great organization Rotary is. So let's face it, Rotary has a great story, but we haven't been telling that story as well as we could to those outside the Rotary network. 
And now that we have this public site, it's really meant to highlight Rotary and its members and the great work that you do in communities all over the world. And for Rotarians, the website now offers a customized experience based on your role within the organization. As a member, you simply log in when first visiting the site, My Rotary, and then you're taken right to a secure specialized dashboard view with all sorts of information that's relevant to you. You can conduct your Rotary business, create a profile, participate in a work group, make connections with fellow members, and do much, much more. Thanks, Peter. Now Gail will be sharing with us some of her experiences with Rotary Coordinator. Gail? Thank you, Catherine. The new site is really exciting and has a lot of appeal to our different audiences. I've received great feedback from districts and of course some helping with a few questions as I'm sure you are too. For a few minutes, let's discuss two aspects of the Rotary website from a coordinator perspective. First, changes and benefits to me as a coordinator. What can I do or learn to do my job better? The second is what can I as a coordinator share with district leaders to help them do their job better? First, what are the benefits for me as a coordinator? What can I do and learn to do my job better? As Peter mentioned, there are features integrated into the system by role. One of the most important benefits for me is being able to access reports and information about the districts in my region. The two types of reports I find most valuable are detailed membership reports and what I like to think of as Club Vibrancy or One Rotary Reports that are located in Rotary Club Central. We can find these in two easy ways. First, by function. We can select our role and what we want to do. The second way is to Rotary Club Central, which you'll hear more about in a few minutes. The additional tools and resources we all use are still there too. For example, our Rotary Workgroups, which has the Rotary Coordinator Exchange, are now found under My Rotary. One of the elements on the site I'm most excited about using are the new social tools. One of those is Create or Join a Group. Not only can I find if there's a focused group that's already sharing information I can use to help my districts, I can also form a discussion group on a topic or for a functional area. For example, I formed a group for Zones 2432 District Membership Chairs and Committees to share ideas and challenges. When that's active in bringing value to district leaders, we will form a group for club membership chairs in the zones. The second key reason and benefit for me as a coordinator is what can I share with district leaders to help them do their job more effectively. There are two main benefits for district. The first is for district leaders to better support clubs. The second is for districts to share with the external audience. District leaders can still find the resources which have always been on the site, only now in an easier and more intuitive way. Plus, they can find new ones. They can learn interactively on the site in a way that best fits their own needs. For example, learn by role. Information is organized by position. They can use the easy-to-find lists of webinars by topics for themselves or to recommend to their clubs as well as newly added information, such as e-clubs, a topic on which many districts in my region are requesting support for development. Earlier, I mentioned the groups feature. It is one of the new social tools that also brings real value to a district and club leaders. For example, there's a discussion group already started for satellite clubs, also a key area of interest for many districts and clubs in my region. The second benefit of the Rotary website for district leaders is using the site to more effectively promote Rotary involvement, membership, and partnerships to the outside world. As you heard from Peter earlier, the site's been developed to reach two overall audiences, those who are already connected with Rotary and the public. One only has to look at the homepage to see the appeal of the site for those who know little about Rotary. 
It speaks to the external audience in an exciting and interesting way. They can learn about Rotary using a communications tool that's motivating, piques their own interest, and makes it easy for them to connect to Rotary, a club, or a project. For example, on the home page, different messages are highlighted about Rotary that appeal to the visitors' own interests and encourage them to click, keeps them reading, and stimulates action. For us as Rotarians, we log in and our website experience is customized for us through the selection of options when we define our roles, which you'll hear more about later in this webinar. And back to you, Catherine. Thanks, Gail, for your insight here. This was a great introduction to some of the ways the new site will assist coordinators in their roles. Now we have a question for the audience. Gail mentioned many different features of the Rotary website that will be useful to you as a coordinator. As a coordinator, what feature do you think you will use the most often? Please use the question pod on your attendee control panel to type in your response. It looks like Steven's going to be looking forward to using the report functions and wants to use it for downloads. Ron is going to be looking at membership trend reports. Looks like we've got a lot of coordinators interested in reports. This is great. All right. Sounds like there's some really great ideas out there, and the website is going to be a great resource moving forward. Now let's hear from Peter again about where to find some of the, these tools that will be particularly useful in your role as a coordinator. Peter? Thank you. So what I'll do is I will um, do a quick tour of the new website and highlight some of the key features and where these tools can be found. Here you see the rotary.org homepage that the general public sees. If I mouse over the menus, you'll notice that um, the menus are light and focused on high-level information that would be most interesting to the general public. So you see join leaders, exchange ideas, and take action. Under About Rotary, we keep the information simple our structure, history, and, fun, and fun financials. You can click on any of these to get more detail. And for those that are interested in press releases and other media, they can visit the Media Center located under News and Features. This new site is really targeted for the general public with large visuals, emotional context that we hope will really engage people to be interested in Rotary. Now, as a Rotarian, you're probably wondering, where is my material? And you'll notice that a banner will scroll across the top informing them that if they're a member of the family of Rotary, you can click on My Rotary to get to where member material is. So let me go ahead and do that. When you go over to My Rotary, you'll notice a couple of things. A much more robust menu structure, because we know that Rotarians want to be able to conduct the business of Rotary quickly. You'll also notice that you have the ability to sign in and register right from the home page. A lot of this is because we want to personalize the experience for you as part of coming to the site. So let me go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go ahead and sign in as myself. Now I should mention that you will not see uh, all of the functionality that you would get. Um, and I'll go into that in just a second. But as I sign in, I'm taking the My Rotary dashboard. And this, in essence, is a personalized view of things that are important to me based on my role. I have here messages that I've received from Rotarians through the site. I have access to key announcements. There are group discussions taking place for me, prominent story that we feel is applicable. And if I scroll down a little bit more, I have information to be able to update my profile featured links, as well as what's new with the website. One of the things you are not seeing is on the left column, you're not seeing a module that all of you should be seeing, which is called the Club Snapshot. And that, in essence, gives you a quick view into Rotary Club Central and the goals that your club has set and how they're doing against them. I'm not seeing that because I'm not a Rotarian. And so it's a good indication of how the dashboard uh, reflects the person logged in. We're hoping to extend the dashboard here in the coming months by allowing you to see things such as how your club um, has paid, if they've paid their semi-annual report, and potentially foundation grants and the status of those. 
Let me now go to my profile. My profile you can access by clicking your name at the top of the screen. From this page you would be able to update your personal information as well as get access to Rotary workgroups. You'll notice here I have a much improved picture than the one you saw during the webinar's introductions. I do like sombreros. And here to the right, you have all of the key links that you need that are individual based. So Rotary Workgroups, which is important, is right here. But you can also see this is where you can access the individual contribution form as well as the donor history report. I won't scroll down on this page, but you will be able to access and update your personal information uh, as appropriate. If I now mouse over the other menus, I do want to go over the rest of the site very quickly. Under Exchange Ideas, this is where you'll find all the resources available to you to connect with other Rotarians. We mentioned discussion groups earlier in the session. This is where you can find a group, view the groups you belong to, and even start a new group. It's also where you can access the community marketplace. There are a lot of tools that Rotarians create that are very useful. But one of the challenges is how do other Rotarians learn about those tools so they can begin to use them and get the value out of them. And that's what the community marketplace is all about, is allowing Rotarians to have access to the great tools created by other members. And this is also where you can go to register for events such as the International Convention and connect with clubs. If we move on to take action, this is where Rotarians can transition from exchanging those ideas to taking the next steps. Under Give, we have information on the ways to give to the Rotary Foundation and where they can make their gift. But this is not the only place that members can go to give. You'll notice that throughout the site there is a blue Give button. So there's many ways to give throughout the site. Under Develop Projects, we have the ability to, to get resources and, and assistance with the complete life cycle of your project. So if you're in the idea stage of a project or if you're looking for resources, to whether you're, you're, you've completed your project and what you'd like to do is actually promote it. Think Rotary Showcase. All of that is available here. And you can browse completed projects to get right to Showcase. If you want to support a project, this will take you to the new idea platform. This is a crowdfunding tool that lets members and non-members donate not just, time, not just money, but time or in-kind resources to a project in their local community. It's very different from Rotary Showcase, which highlights completed projects. This is really about projects that Rotary Clubs are looking to do in the near future. If you want to apply for a grant, you would do that here under Apply for Grants. The grant application tool, the very top link, will actually take you straight into the online application tool for Future Vision. But let's keep in mind that there are also public image grants from the Rotary International side. So we have all of the grant activities together because some Rotarians we know think to themselves, I want to apply for a grant. They do not make the divide of it's an RI or a foundation grant. I'll talk about that a little bit more. And then lastly, here at the very end, we talk about empowering leaders. Let's not forget that taking action is more than simply doing a service project. You may want to start a Rotaract club or an Interact club in your community. You may want to join a fellowship. All of those are a key part of taking action. Moving on to the next section of learning and reference. This is where you will find all of the training information and all the key resources. And this is where district leaders can go to register for upcoming webinars. This very last link right here. Now, we know that many people like to learn by role. I'm a new club president. And if that's the way you think of the world, we have a path for you to move forward. You can go to learn by role, click on club roles, and be able to find the information that you need. But you also have others that like to think to themselves, I want to learn about membership. And so we have learn by topic, which will allow people to focus on a specific topic and not so much a general role. And so under membership, you'll find resources with publications aimed at helping you with your club membership. Fundraising has important resources on how to hold an effective fundraiser and exploring outside sources of project funding. Projects has key information about creating, designing, and implementing a successful and measurable service project. And public relations. This is where clubs and districts can find resources and tips for promoting their projects successfully. Under About Rotor, we have key information about the organization, the structure, its leadership, and its storied history. 
policies and procedures is where most of the governance documents are. If you're looking for the manual procedure, RI bylaws, or trustee and board decisions. And then lastly, we know how important documents are. We've revamped the document center to make it easier to find the key documents that you need. The Manage tab is really where the business of Rotary happens. For those of you that use Member Access, most of the functionality under Member Access that is not individual-based is now under Club and District Administration. If it's a club element, it would be under Club Administration. Thank your club officers. If it's a district piece of functionality, you'd find it here. And then a lot of the reporting that many of you are interested in based on the questions earlier are going to be under either contributions or reports. And in fact, for most people, they'll be under both because we know that people think differently about how to access information. We also have tools and templates where you can access Rotary logos and graphics, the visual identity guidelines, and key information to help you conduct the business of Rotary. We know that many of you incur expenses traveling for Rotary. That information is here as well. And then lastly, if you're looking for a key publication, or want to want to see who the licensed vendors are to be able to purchase items, you can do that here. The next tab is the Rotary Foundation. This is really one-stop shopping for all information about the foundation. You'll notice one of the first topics here is applying for a grant. But we also had that under Take Action, applying for a grant. We have it under both places because some people think first, I'm applying for a foundation grant. And we want to make sure that if that's the, the lens with which you think about the world, that you're still able to quickly and easily get to the functionality that you need. And so you'll notice that the grant application tool here will take you right into the online application for Future Vision again. There are, again, ways to give directly to the foundation, mimicking the functionality under Take Action here. And then we have information about and the history of the Rotary Foundation. Lastly, member news. This section replaces the announcement section of the old website. We have a robust section on the Office of the President where you can read on the President's travels as well as their theme. We have links to the magazines, not just the Rotarian, but the regional magazines, newsletters, as well as key news and features and announcements. We really feel the new website is a significant improvement from the last one. By splitting it into two, We've done a better job of focusing on the audiences and their different needs. The general public gets a site that is emotional and provides them the right context of who Rotary is and why they should care. And members get a site that's optimized for them with a navigation and structure that really makes it easy for them to get to the information that they need. And so with that, I want to hand it back to Catherine. And I ask that all of you be champions of this website as we move forward. Great. Thanks, Peter. That was very instructive. As you continue to explore the new site, you'll find more and more tools that are available, and we encourage you all to click around, get a feel for the new site, and give us your feedback. We want to know what you think about the new experience. Your feedback as coordinators will help us make the site even better over time. Please send comments and questions to website at rotary.org. Let's now open up the discussion for any questions you may have regarding the Rotary website. Again, please submit questions or comments to our panelists and Rotary staff members using the question pod on your attendee control panel. It looks like we've got a question from Tammy. She wants to know about selecting your role when logging into the website. If an individual has more than one role, for example, a regional coordinator role in addition to a another zone, district, or club role, which role should be chosen? Can you only choose one or multiple? That's a great question. On the old site, when you would log into Member Access, you were prompted to select your role. But on the new site, it no longer works that way. When you log into the website, you log in as yourself. When you go to click on a link that uh, the role selector matters on. So for example, if you're, if you're going to run a report uh, where you have access, for example, to your club or you might have access to multiple other clubs or the district, you'll be prompted to choose your role. It's at that time that you, sele you should select the role that is most appropriate for the information that you're looking for. Great. I think that helps a lot. 
Rod wants to know about regional coordinator assistance and if they have the same level of access as the regional coordinators. They do. Assistants have the same access as regional coordinators across all the programs. They'll have the same access to the Rotary Coordinator Exchange, the RRFC Forum, and the RR, RPIC work group, just like the coordinators. They also are going to have the same access to reports and all functionality in Rotary Club Central as the coordinators have. Let's see, we've got a couple more questions that we can take right now. Stephen wants to know if about all RRFCs listed as member under the current Rotary role. Should they be listed as RRFCs or just member? I think that this question applies for Rotary coordinators and RPICs as well. That's a great question. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that the question relates to uh, the profile section that has uh, your basic information and it shows your current Rotary role. That is actually one of the bugs that we're experiencing right now, that it's not showing your full Rotary resume. That section is intended to show um, your history, if you will, from uh, you joining the organization all the way up to your current role. We are working on that. It should not affect your access, though, to the correct information and being able to run reports. It's simply a display issue at this point. We are working on it and hope to have it resolved soon. Thanks, Peter. We've got another question from Bruce. This is a great question about district governors promoting the new website. Do we have any materials that we can distribute to district governors or that the coordinators can use to promote the new website? He said that he was with a DG on an official visit, and the DG did not mention the new website at all. How can we ask uh, district officials to push out the new site? That's a great question. Um, we are continuing to make new resources available. We do have a video that is about two minutes long that will be uh, going up on the website later this week that um, is a promotional video that really highlights some of the key new features. We're also beginning to record slightly longer videos, uh, three to five to six minutes, that go into more depth about key features of the site so that if people are interested in learning more about a specific topic, they're able to do that in small, uh, in small bits without having to uh, watch a 30-minute video. And those should be available later this week as well. Thanks, Peter. We've got a question from Penny about My Rotary. Who has access to this? Can rotor actors and interactors sign up for My Rotary? Wonderful question. The answer is yes. Uh, in fact, all of them can sign up for My Rotary, and the truth is that you know, even a member of the general public can sign up to My Rotary. Having said that, it's important to note that your security is still determined by your role. So when we talk about the group's functionality specifically, Rotarians and Rotor actors can participate in group discussions, but uh, at this point the general public and others cannot that is still very much a members-centric uh, uh, functionality. Thanks, Peter. I hope that was helpful. We've got a, another question from Rod, who wants to know about the message function on the website. Is it the same as email? Is it the same thing as sending an email to another Rotarian, or does it have a different, more expanded function? Uh, it is not the same as email. Um, in fact, if you, if you know another Rotarian's email, you are probably better off using their email. Uh, the purpose of the messaging function within the new Rotary.org is that if you want to introduce yourself to a new Rotarian and you do not have their contact information, it, it in essence allows you to get in touch with them while still protecting their privacy. They, you, don't, you don't receive access to their email address until they in essence, give it to you. So it's a nice feature to be able to contact Rotarians you don't know while still protecting the member's privacy during that process. Great. We've got a question about Club Finder. What would you put in for the keyword when searching? Another great question. Uh, Club Finder is, um, is working, though not quite as well as we would like. The key the keyword search today, you should, you should largely search on the community or the name of the club. It's very similar to the way it worked on the last website. 
we are looking at making significant improvements to this so that it is much more location-based. And you can type in an address or a city and, and state or province, and it will be able to return clubs within a very close proximity. We should have that in the near future. Thanks, Peter. Earlier you mentioned that it's important to sign in to have functionality. How important is it to sign out at the end of each session? Great question. Um, unless you're on a public computer, accessing the site through something like a library or at an internet cafe, we'd actually encourage you on a home PC to stay signed in. It'll make your experience a little bit more seamless, and you'll have that personalized experience every time you come back to the site. Rest assured, though, that when you go to run a report where you're accessing contribution information, for example, on other Rotarians, that you will be asked to re-sign in to make sure that we are protecting the privacy of that inf of, of those Rotarians' data. Thanks, Peter. It looks like we've got time for one more question. Penny wants to know um, a follow-up question about the messaging system on the website. When a Rotarian receives a message, are they going to get an email notification, or do they have to log into the website to know that someone has tried to contact them? Another great question. Uh, today, when you, when you log in and you see your name at the top of the website, there's a little number behind it. That little number is actually how many messages or connection requests you have on the site. For most people, that will probably be zero right now until Rotarians adopt it. Um, so for today, you will need to log into the site to see those messages. We are enhancing this in the near future so that it will actually send the Rotarian an email letting them know that somebody wants to get in touch with them through rotary.org. Great. These have been some fabulous questions. I already have a better understanding of the website. Again, if your question has not been addressed yet, you will receive an email response within the week if we don't get to it later in the session. Now let's move on to Rotary Club Central another very important tool for you to use in your role as coordinator. Liz will be sharing information on this tool and will highlight a few ways in which you can use this tool as a coordinator. Liz? Thanks so much, Catherine. I'm really happy to be with, here with everyone today um, <clears throat> to provide an update on our new goal setting tool, Rotary Club Central. This tool empowers the club, district, and zone leaders to monitor club progress and achievements in three key performance areas, membership initiatives, service activities, and Rotary Foundation giving. Rotary Club Central is available to all Rotarians, <clears throat> but has additional features depending on your officer role. Today we will be covering the following. Why should clubs use Rotary Club Central? Who can edit and view club goals and progress? And how can you get to it in the new website? So we're just a little delay on the slides, but we're going to talk about why should clubs use Rotary Club Central. First of all, it's a one-stop shop. It provides access to all the data that was previously available from several reports. It also eliminates some paper. It replaces paper forms such as the membership and Rotary Foundation goals forms, as well as the planning guide for effective Rotary Clubs and the memo of club visit. It fosters continuity and leadership. Club leaders change annually. So by offering them the ability to see a history of goals and achievements for their club creates much more consistency among the leaders. It enables clubs to track their progress. Club leaders can determine whether the goals they've set are realistic and make changes as needed. It creates transparency. All club members are able to see the club goals. Lastly, it showcases the important work that Rotary Clubs do worldwide. Until now, Rotary had no vehicle to collect information about the millions of service projects that Rotarians undertake. With Rotary Club Central, clubs can document the details of their projects, such as the number of volunteers and number of volunteer hours, and a list of in-kind donations, which I'll show you in a minute in this webinar. 
Now, who can enter club goals and achievements? At the club level, current, incoming, and past club presidents, secretaries, treasurers, foundation chair, membership chair, and executive secretary can all enter goals only for the year that they're in office. At the district level, the current incoming and past district governor, assistant governor, committee chairs, and district executive secretaries can view and edit the goals for all clubs in their district only for the year that they're in office. Now, assistant governors may view all goals, but only edit the goals for the clubs in their club group. District leaders have been given this ability so they can assist a club with reporting its goals in case they're unable to do so. So when goals are set on behalf of the club, an automated email is generated and sent to the club officers, listing the goal change and who made that change. So please note that the committee chairs are only those committee chairs that Rotary collects on the district appointments form. Many districts have additional committee chairs. Only those that we collect can access the system. Ideally, club officers will enter their club goals during their elect year. But current incoming and immediate past officers can edit goals and achievements for their own year at any time. So uh, presidents-elect that will be attending PETS in February, March, April would ideally go into the system and click on the 14-15 tab to start submitting some goals before PETS. So who can view club goals and achievements? All club members, RI directors and trustees, the coordinators and advisors, including the Rotary Coordinator, Rotary Public Image Coordinator, Regional Rotary Foundation Coordinator, and Endowment and Major Gift Advisors, as well as all of your assistants. And there's a list you can see of, of those that I just said. So now I'm going to show you what's the most direct way to get to Rotary Club Central from the new website. The most direct way is on the My Rotary page, and you'll see below the My Club snapshot. So from here, you'll see club details such as meeting location, website, charter date, members. You can also see a summary of how many goals your club has set and achieved in each section of Rotary Club Central. At the very bottom, you'll see a link that says Visit Rotary Club Central, and that's where you can click to start viewing and editing your goals. Great. Thanks, Liz. That was very helpful. It's really helpful to see how to use Rotary Club Central in relation to the new site. Now that we've reviewed RCC, Joan will share her experiences using this tool as a coordinator. Joan? Thanks, Catherine. Uh, as an RRFC, I've been asked to share some of the features of Rotary Club Central that I feel are useful to us as coordinators. And as an RRFC, I'm most familiar, of course, with the Foundation Giving tab. So first, we'd like to go into the coordinator view. And I will just do that now once I've got control here. No, that didn't work. We'll get up and running here in a second. Okay. So, coordinator view. I want to get into Foundation Giving. Here we are. And the Foundation Giving tab is up at the top. Okay, so we're going to scroll down and
No, this isn't the right slide. Where are we? Joan, you can just go ahead and click on coordinator view. Okay, that's what I was there trying. You go. Yeah, I think you went back to club view because there was okay. a little bit of an Sorry. error. Sorry. All right, here we are. We're in business. So right away from a tracking perspective, I can see that 82% of the clubs in Zone 25 have submitted their annual fund goals. Similarly below, four other categories of the annual fund are broken down into percentage of goals entered. Then we'll move down to Polio Plus, and we can see that from the zone, 52% of the clubs have submitted goals. And under major gifts and endowment fund, uh, a much smaller percentage of clubs have entered goals in those categories. But from a coordinator's perspective, I'm interested in looking at the annual fund particularly. So let's go back up there. So I'd like to see the percentages broken down into the districts that I'm responsible for. So I hit the view button. And up should come the 10 districts that I'm responsible for in Zone 25. And there they are. Because I belong to District 5020 and it's right at the top of the list, we'll use that one as, as an example. So when I look at the district goal for District 5020, because I belong to the district, I know that that goal is a little bit low, so I'd like to investigate further and just see exactly where that came from and, and what percentage uh, of goals have been submitted. So I go right away to the View tab and hit that. The system allows you to drill down quite a long ways. Go. It should come up here shortly. There we go. And if we go down to the middle of the page under annual fund, there's the goal for the district. And again, um, I think that's a little low. And one way to do it, check that out is that. Um, if you go to this drop-down menu here for the years, click in and put in 2012-13, you'll see right there that last year $652,000 um, was actually raised in the annual fund for this district. So the number that was on the goals is actually quite low. And if we go down a little bit further, we'll see only 28% of clubs, there's 88 clubs in District 5020, only 28% have input their annual fund goal into Rotary Club Central. So right away we have a job for assistant RRFCs uh, to make sure that they can work with their respective clubs and try and get that number up. You also have the ability with the view tab over here to again drill down even further to each one of the 88 clubs and see exactly who has submitted their goals and who hasn't. And then further down under Polio Plus, so in the district only 23% of clubs have submitted goals. And one of the most important numbers here is what the goal is for the district. So I've just told you that the district has 88 clubs. So Given that we know that the Art Rotary has asked us to each club to contribute at least $1,500 to polio for the year, we know that that number should be up in the $132,000 uh, range. So again, we already know that with only 23% having put goals in, we've got a long way to go, so there's work to be done. And again, we have the ability to drill down under the View tab to check out each one of the clubs and see who has or has not submitted their goals. So two more features quickly and we'll just go up to the top here. 
if I can get up there. And we'll go up to the club group view. This is an excellent tool for assistant governors, many of whom don't know that this tool is here. So as coordinators, we can certainly make sure that this is something they're aware that they have a useful resource. So the club group view shows assistant governors information about the goals and achievements for their assigned clubs. Now if you look up here, again, another drop-down menu. And this is showing my district, District 5020. Hit the drop-down menu, and there are all the areas that assistant governors are responsible for. And you can see right now that this page is on Area 10 in my district. So flipping down here, you can see that they have not submitted any goals. So right away, we have an action that we can take in contacting the assistant governor and the clubs and whatnot to make sure that these goals are set. Rotary Club Central is a tremendous tool for our assistant governors who can work hand-in-hand -hand with their respective ARRFCs to work on getting the goals input into the system. From my experience, assistant governors don't often align themselves with the foundation side, and this tool is an excellent way to get them involved. And during their quarterly club visits, in addition to the district governor, they can be an influencer regarding all things foundation, just by virtue of tracking their clubs on Rotary Club Central. And last but not least, in addition to Rotary work groups, our monthly reports for coordinators are accessible through Rotary Club Central. We just go back up here to reports. <clears throat> Again, you have individual reports and coordinator reports. And underneath the coordinator reports are all the goals, or all the uh, reports that we normally get our information from on a monthly basis through Rotary work groups. Now we have the ability to do both. You can use either Rotary Club Central or the Rotary work groups. And that's it for me, and I hope you all take the opportunity to make good use of Rotary Club Central. Thanks, Joan. It looks like Rotary Club Central has been a great asset to you as a coordinator. And thanks for highlighting some of your favorite aspects of this tool. Also, thanks to the audience for bearing with us with the time delay that we're having due to the GoToWebinar system. Now we have a question for the audience. How have you, how have you all been using this tool? Please share with us through the question pod. Looks like we've had some coordinators encouraging clubs to track their goals. Great. Looks like we've got a lot of um, great responses here. Now let's move on and hear from Liz again about some other goals in Rotary Club Central. Great job, Joan. Joan showed you some um, great tips on the Foundation tab. And I'm just going to show you the Year Club and Service tab. But first, I just wanted to make a comment about the report section. Um, for the coordinators, I'm sure you only saw that there were Foundation reports there. And our team is working very hard to get more reports for the coordinator level for service projects, as well as for some more membership reports. So I just wanted to show you this is the page that you will land on as a club member. So you will always land on your home club's information. So you see Jones Club, Oak Bay, Victoria is up here. Now again, she clicked on the coordinator view, and I'm going to do the same thing. Um, I'm just going to show you how you can drill down very quickly and see some statistics in the Year Club tab. So as a coordinator, you will only see the districts that you are assigned to based on your area. So Joan um, is in Zone 25, and she sees 10 districts. Um, here we go. We landed on the coordinator summary view. Now, you see the gender and the trends. I know that many of the regional membership plans have some data about um, you know, increasing female membership, um, 
many things about age, and this is where you can get some great baseline data. Here we see the gender trends. If you click on View Details, it's going to bring up a report that shows all the gender makeups in every zone in the world. And so what you do is just go through the report and look for your zone. Um, so it'll just take a few minutes to, to come up, not minutes, seconds. Um, and you can see this for age and gender. So here we go. Let's look at zone one. And it has a really nice breakdown of each district and the number of females to males in each district. And to search for your zone, you just go down at the bottom to the next page. So I think that'll be really useful for a lot of, um, a lot of the coordinators. You do the same thing for the age. One thing I wanted to point out, do you see the unreported is 91% for the age in Jones zone? Um, for us to get better, or for you to get better data, um, really encourage your club and district members to go into their profile and set their gender and their birth year. They don't have to give um, any more information than just the year, but that'll give you really great, great baseline data. So on the Your Club tab, Again, make sure that your users have clicked the right year that they are in office. So before I mentioned um, President-elect for going to pets this year, they would click on the 1415 tab to go in and set their goals. So we have membership retention, Rotarian engagement. How involved are the members in the club? Club communication, and PR. So let's look at one of the PR goals, public relations goals. Number of times we update our website per month. Oh, my screen has gone a little small. Okay. Um, what you would do is click on View. So this is this is for the entire region that Zone covers. So we're going to click on View. And this is how we drill down a little bit deeper. So if you didn't want to do number of times we update our website, you would just click on the drop down and, and decide which goal you wanted to look at. But let's just keep it there. And let's look at District 5020. Okay, it shows they're in Zone 25. Um, as a district, the clubs say they're going to update their website 60 times per month. And the actual reporting of this goal is They've done it 12 times. So then we're going to drill a little bit further. And this is how you'll get to the actual club information. Once this goes through, then you'll be able to select the club. And you just scroll down, and you'll see The district has 19% of clubs with goals. And then you would just click View again. Now if we scroll back up, a little trick is to toggle between each district rather than going back to the coordinator view. There's a drop down up here similar to what Joan showed about the club group view. And that makes it a little bit more user friendly. So now what I'd like to show you is how to submit a service project goal. So what you're going to do is just click on service. And in service projects, there's three goals. Um, service projects and activities, new generations clubs, as well as new generation participants. So we'll just click on View. And we're going to be looking at a club called Nanaimo Oceanside Club. And what I'm going to show you is actually the 2012-13 service projects for this club because those projects are completed. And I wanted to show you what that looks like. Um, some clubs haven't finished the 
you know, it's a little bit early for 13, 14. Here we go. Nanaimo Oceanside. And you could select 2012, 13 here or when we get into their club. There's a lot of options. So let's click on 2012, 13. And you'll notice this trends graph. Um, this is for clubs that have completed the projects. And if you roll over, it shows the total cash for this club, in-kind values, as well as volunteers and volunteer hours. So you'll see the Nanaimo Oceanside Club has five projects they completed last year. I'm sure they did more, but with the Rotary Club Central being so new, um, it's great that they got five projects in there. And when you click on View, you can really see the details of what this club has done for service. So their goal last year was six, and they completed five, which is great. Uh, let's take a look at the cash for kids. So there's going to be a title. Now, if you had edit access, this would have uh, fields for you to fill in. But as coordinators, uh, you can view this, and you just click Expand Project View. There's two sections in the Service Projects Goal area. You have your projected resources, where a club can really plan and think about the number of volunteers they need, how much cash contributions, in-kind donations. Um, and then there's an area for what they actually did. So in projected, you see they plan to have 20 volunteers working 50 volunteer hours. Um, and then if you click on details, they can then enter the project categories, partners, funding, just more detailed information about that service project. This club did not enter any categories, but let's look at their actual resources. They marked it achieved. They actually had 30 volunteers. And if we click on details, well, it looks like they were in the community project category. They partnered with Interact, Rotaract, Friends of Rotary, so it's a great, great planning tool for clubs to use. So now I want to show you the feature on how you can import service projects from um, Rotary Showcase and from Rotary Grants. And I'm going to do this with the slides. So what you see now is the screen that I was showing before. The service projects and activities, their goal was five and one. And they filled out all of their information. And when you go to the next slide, you'll see when you scroll down all the way to the bottom, there will be a link that says view and add existing projects list. So when a user clicks on that link, they will be taken to an import list. And this is all the projects that exist in Rotary Showcase for that club, as well as in Rotary Grants. So the next, the next view will show you that list. And you see all you do is click the box Import, and all the information will be put into Rotary Club Central only for that current year. So it's a really great way to link and promote projects that are in Rotary Club Central to Rotary Showcase, and then showcase projects that are already there, bring them back to Rotary Club Central. So I just want to share how you, as a Rotary coordinator, can be a champion for Rotary Club Central. Um, really encourage district and club leaders to create an account on my Rotary. This will get them into the system, see what goals and um, achievements they have, they have made. Just have them explore the tool. Set a goal. It's OK to make a mistake. It's OK to come back and change your goal. Um, just, just have them play around in, the, in Rotary Club Central. And lastly, um, ask them to update their member data, the club officers, for their members, including the members' birth year and gender specifically. And that will give you really rich data on, on what's going on in your area. So thank you very much. Thank you, Liz. Thanks for walking us through Rotary Club Central a little bit more, as well as helping us better understand how coordinators can promote this tool. 
let's open up the discussion again for any questions any of you may have about Rotary Club Central or the Rotary website. Again, questions can be submitted using the question pod. It looks like we've gotten quite a few questions in about working with assistant, assistant governors. Are assistant governors being trained on how to use Rotary Club Central? Are they being encouraged to use it? What kind of incentives are there? Are there hard incentives for assistant governors and clubs to be using this new tool? Thanks, Catherine. Um, right now in the Learning Center, which is learn.rotary.org, there are some great resources, including a club reference guide with screenshots showing where to click, how to enter a goal. There's a district reference guide that shows how to use club group. Um, there's a very general presentation that can be downloaded and presented at clubs and districts, as well as a webinar we did back in June, and just some promotional items. Um, our club and district support area is really support, uh, sending targeted emails to assistant governors. We just began collecting their data um, in March 2012 in our Rotary database. So we're really, really um, pushing a lot of communication to this group. Thanks for that answer, Liz. Another question about Rotary Club Central in regard to the data available. How often is this updated? Is it a continuous live update? There's both a couple questions on this. Live data can be great, however, it's hard to track progress when it's constantly being updated. Is there a way to look at static data from the past? Um, that's a great question. Yes, it is. For club level data, that is updated instantaneously. As you get more on the aggregate level at the district, zone, and global level, that is updated on a nightly basis. Um, we talked about, you know, when a club goes in to set a goal, locking it down. Uh, for the first year that this tool is in, has been live, we are going to just keep it open and, and just see how people use the tool and really encourage them just to go in and set a goal. Uh, you can go in and click on 2012-13 and, you know, see what the goals were for that previous year. Most likely, club officers will not go back and change those goals on as a regular basis as um, if it were the current year. Thanks. Another question about Rotary Club Central. Piotr wants to know, he entered a project in Showcase before the new website was launched. Is it still in Showcase, or does it need to be re-entered? The project will still be in Showcase. There were no changes to Rotary Showcase when the website launched. We did launch a few enhancements to the system, but no, you, you should not have to go back and, and re-enter that project. Rotary Showcase, um, where can you find the project? I believe you can just use the search function. Um, it should be under, when you, log, when you log into Rotary Showcase, it'll say projects related to your club. Um, and that should be a good indicator that it's still there. Great. And looking at data available, is it possible to compare previous years Yes, um, we are working on a report to show a club and a district the last five years of goals and achievements so they can really realistically plan for the next year, but also look at what was done by the club five years ago. So we can really create consistency, transparency, and those reports should be coming hopefully sometime this spring. Now we've got a question on the website, Peter. Ajay wants to know, is the new website already available in different languages? Yes, the website should be available um, in most of the Rotary languages except for um, Swedish at this point. Um, we have heard some reports that people coming in in different languages are it's defaulting to English, but they should be able to change the language selector. We're looking into that as one of our top priorities to make sure that it displays in the correct language when you first come to the site. Thanks. 
In regard to the club finder function, Rod wants to know, can this be used to locate Rotaract or Interact clubs? I believe the answer is yes to Rotaract, but I want to confirm that. Um, and as of right now, intera Interact clubs um, are not uh, able to be located through the club finder. Thanks. Penny Offer wants to know, is there a link between the personal membership data and Rotary Club Central? Is the data RI already has included in this tool? Um, the link between the membership data and Rotary Club Central is linked when a club submits their semi-annual report. In the background in our member database, it will then cross-reference the number of members listed on that report and then be able to display it in Rotary Club Central. Great. Greg wants to know about the upcoming zone institutes. What tools does, do the coordinators have to promote both the new Rotary website and Rotary Club Central at these events? It's a great question, Greg. For um, the website, we do have that two-minute promotional video uh, that we'll be posting a link later today. We also have those walkthroughs uh, that are available. Additionally, um, we do have the makings of a PowerPoint presentation for those that would like to do more of a breakout session and walk through some of the key features. Um, it, it provides, I think, a good uh, template and outline, though it's not meant to be a standalone presentation. It's really meant to be a foundational element that uh, folks can customize based on exactly what they want to emphasize at their session or institute. For Rotary Club Central, um, in the Learning and Reference section, if you go to the Learning Center, there's a course called Rotary Club Central Resources. Uh, you can download a general PowerPoint presentation. Um, there's a promotional item that we had at convention that says, what's in it for clubs? How can you promote it to clubs? There's also a template for, I think I gave it to Christine Grodecki, um, to create mouse pads, that's just a goal that was given out at the convention to really promote uh, Rotary Club Central. So there's a few things that you could do to pass out at uh, Institute. Sounds like we've got a lot of options for the upcoming institutes. In regard to publications put out by RI, in the past, Rotarians have used Shop Rotary. However, can we use that product code on the back of the publication to search in the search box, or do we have to continue using Shop Rotary? For the time being, you would need to continue using Shop Rotary. We are looking at making a search enhancement, as this is some of the feedback that we're hearing, to allow you to type in that code and make sure that it comes up in the search results. Uh, but that is not working as of today. So we'll continue with Shop Rotary. In regard to fundraising facility on the website, Tanya wants to know when fundraising facilities will be available for Rotarians and third-party fundraisers. She wants to know about the same tool that was used by Secretary Hugo for his bike ride last year. The donations go directly to the Rotary Foundation, receipts are produced. Fundraiser and fundraising groups would need a report on progress. Peter, can you speak to that? Sure. Um, there are, there's new functionality available that I think is very close to what you are looking for, um, though it will not work quite the same way. If you go to My Rotary under Take Action and look at uh, Volunteer on a Project or Support a Project, it will actually take you to ideas.rotary.org. And this is the crowd contributing platform that allows a club officer to set up a local uh, project that their local community and others can support. What I would encourage you to do is use this resource to raise funds. Um, unlike the John Hugo bike ride, the funds do not go directly to the foundation. They would go um, to the club. The club would need to set up its own account. but. Uh, and, and this has happened in the past with other local fundraisers, 
you can collect all of that money, send it to the foundation with all of the, the requisite data of who the donations came from, et cetera, and all of those donations will be processed um, as tax deductible, assuming that the, the giver is in a country uh, and it meets the tax regulations. I hope that's helpful. All right, we've got time for one last question. Anne wants to know what the link is between Club Runner and Club Central. Will data entered on Club Runner automatically appear on Rotary Club Central? No, there is no uh, data syncing between Club Runner and Rotary Club Central at this time for goals. Thanks, Liz. All right, with that, we will con conclude today's webinar. Thank you all for joining us and participating. A special thank you to Rotary Coordinator Gail Nepper and RRFC Joan Ferkins for serving as panelists. Big thank you to our staff as well. You will be receiving a survey after the webinar. We would greatly appreciate your feedback on this experience. You will also receive an email with a link to a recording of today's webinar. You will also receive links to the RI website promotional videos that Peter mentioned earlier. If your question was not addressed during this session, you will receive a response via email within the week. As always, please feel free to contact us with any additional questions or comments you may have. Thank you again and enjoy the rest of your day. The organizer.